in northern India live a nomadic people made of dancers and musicians. Their name means those who love snakes. They are the most emblematic tribe of the Rajasthan Gypsies, the Kalbalia. My name is Rafael Treza. I'm a musician and filmmaker. I'm going to spend the next three months with the gypsies of Rajasthan. My journey begins in Mumbai. With a 15 hour train trip and a second class sleeper. I arrive in Rajasthan, in the Tar Desert, an arid land on the border of Pakistan. Punctuated by oases with generous and fertile land. Pushkar will be my base camp. holy city, appreciated by the travelers for its hippie atmosphere. They come in order to discover Indian culture, like the Bollywood dance. On the road, I meet Biram, a Kalbelia gypsy. He agrees to introduce me to his people and will be my translator. Viram's family is setting up a camp in their new workplace. They're going to make charcoal. Biram has settled here with his children and wife, Santos. How many children do you have? Me have three. Two girls, one boy. Rahul, Kavita, Sola. Sola. In order to make charcoal, they use the kata tree, a shrub that is prevalent around the fields and whose long thorns can bust tires. Its branches are mostly used to build walls in order to protect the village from wild animals like panthers. The tractor is stuck. This is good. This is danger. Straw has to be placed under the sand in order to remove the trailer from the fields. Who did you film on? I did. 
Krishma is a sedentary Kabelia. She makes henna for a living. She sells it to the tourists. She's part of the first generation of gypsies who goes to school. She also teaches Kalbelia dance to travelers who come from all over the world to improve their technique. Like Luna, a Mexican dancer. Krishma's family performs shows in hotels. Krishma's cousin, Sadhu, is a horse trainer. I'm on my way to discover the nomad Kalbelia's camps. Kalbelia are nomadic agricultural workers. They're also shepherds. They are Hindus and were considered untouchable until this discriminatory practice was abolished in 
Buram invites me to a Kalbelia music concert. It is the day of Holi, celebrated in the name of Krishna. Before entering any village, the way is blocked by locals who are asking for a fee in order to continue. Two days a year, castes don't matter. The whole country lives in a joyful anarchy. Holi is also a celebration of colors. Hindus of all ages are getting involved in water and colored pigment battles. The youth then discovers night parties and sometimes alcohol. A police car comes and everybody escapes. Wow, nice! All gypsy people there. Another people know there like this. This all gypsy make house here. Look. Kalbelia are quite astonished when they discover my presence. I'll come to understand later that they have never met a foreigner before. The musicians are on the way to rock the audience until sunrise. On the way back, we stop to drink chai, tea with milk and spices. Biram wants to show me pets in a gypsy village. There's a rabbit. And a cobra. No poison? No poison. Uh, yes. I can touch? Well, really? Sure. Yeah, yeah, touch. They assure me that no its poison, venom yeah. is often extracted. No poison. You touch, no problem. But its bite remains dangerous. No poison. When it's handled, a cobra adopts a peaceful behavior. Kalbelia gypsies have it as a symbol. Dancers learned since childhood how to handle it while dancing. Biram's father-in-law, Surumnat, is a sedentary Kalbelia. He sometimes catches cobras and exhibits them in villages around in order to make money. We leave with his son, Johornat. They're going to show me their way to catch a cobra. Surumnat glimpsed at something. A Neil guy, or blue cow, an Asian antelope. Once considered a nuisance because of their appetite for farming products, some gypsy castes were then in charge of hunting them. Prohibition of hunting in India in 1972 ended this habit. Go in and look. 
Surumnath finds a sleeping little python. He also finds a sand snake, the bogey, quite common in Rajasthan. Potentially dangerous snakes often cross the village. Biram finds a cobra's molt, and his father-in-law finds a nest. He catches a monitor lizard. Its bite can start septicemia, a life-threatening infection. Being too small to have its skin used as a drum, he'll be freed. These reptiles can reach a surprising speed. Relatives of Biram are going to show me the most dangerous lizard from Tar's desert. Its venom is said to be as powerful as a cobra's. Scientists only recently discovered that poison glands existed in some lizards. Yet not one Indian lizard species has been indexed as poisonous. This animal, the Fukan, looks like a Bengali monitor lizard. but it produces a blow as strong as a cobra's. This gives credit to the Kalbelia belief that these lizards are dangerous. Oh, <laughs> On the way back, we meet women in a haircut session. and others who are digging a well. <laughs> Part of the team leaves to mourn around graves. This is my father. In contrast to other Hindus, the Kalbelia don't cremate their dead.
With the Kalbelia, funerals are celebrated with music and dancing. The most appreciated dancers receive bills. Carbelia may be at the origin of castanets, the cartals, simple pieces of wood or stones. Second day, looking for cobras with Rakesh, another son of Suranat. Cobra's tracks can be seen in the sand. A nest and leftovers from a meal. A turtle. And a swarm of very aggressive wild bees. In Rajasthan, bees are all over the place. At every water spot, where they bear the presence of other species. On buildings' walls. In temples. Rumal lives in a nomad Kabelia camp and takes me honey hunting. For safety reasons, Children under 10 years old are not allowed. Ramal found it a swarm in a tree. He's gonna try to smoke them out with a beady, a eucalyptus cigarette. believe that a fire begins and start adopting an escape behavior. Back on the hunt for cobras with Rakesh and his young son. 
more tracks in the sand. We meet a shepherdess. Rakesh finds a hedgehog, and after an entire day of walking, we give up hope of finding a cobra. In Biram's camp, after bringing wood, we need to chop it to pieces. After stacking the wood, we have a charcoal pile that needs to be covered with cloth. Then with soil. Because girl big and after other boy love and she's going. And how many children do you want? Me too. Because Jews good, good eating, good clothes, and good school, and many is not good. What eating? Me eating, yeah, baby eating, not good. However, Kalbelia mainly wish for daughters because their dancing shows are the most lucrative and valorized activity. Couples are often arranged from childhood, starting at the age of five. And Kalbelia's couples stay together for their entire lives. The wedding occurs during adolescence. Women are preparing a paste with flour and spices. The future groom is covered with it. His mother is performing ritual gestures. Gifts are offered to the family. Men of the family play gabu gabu, an instrument made with lizard skin. The young man is dressed with a rupee necklace. A mobile DJ has been hired and brings guests to the bride's house.
On this day, two weddings will be celebrated. Girls are blessed by the families. And the intended spouses finally meet. several nomadic tribes in Rajasthan. One of those is composed of traveling musicians, the bopas and their violins with so-called sympathetic strings, the Rawanatal. <laughs> and the Bagria. Nomadic seasonal workers who have an extremely close relationship with ship with their camels. Bagriyas were a tribe of hunters until this practice was forbidden. They have a peculiar practice amongst the gypsies. Binu, a Kalbelia gypsy, will help by translating for me. This is for God. This is very strong God. He is never making sour. Never. However, Bagria do not smell bad. Extreme worship practices are widespread and respected in India. The kids have untied their camels and are letting them graze for too long. Raj and his little brother have to go search for them. Raj found his camel.
meet their mother. Who didn't appreciate that the animals were left without a watch. Night falls on Surumnath's village. The family is watching TV when screams start to be heard. A snake is going across the village. Kalbanias are called in order to catch it. It's a cobra. Surumnath puts a cloth into its mouth in order to avoid being bitten while putting him into the basket. Dawn approaches the village. During the night, puppies were born. We're on our way to release the cobra, far from the village. the sun's heat in order to move. Kalbelia also sell cobra's venom for a living. It's used in Ayurvedic medicine in order to prevent sight problems. Kanipav Nachi, their main god, is pictured using this venom. The practice is confirmed to me by an Indian doctor. I accept that he applies dried venom on my eyes. 
Now you do your eyes up and down inside close, close, yeah. Inside. Okay. It burns during a couple seconds. Then the pain blurs. It's not that bad. At Biram's camp, it's time to start burning the charcoal piles. The minimum oxygen content helps the partial combustion of the wood that turns it into coal. <laughs> Three days later, the charcoal piles have lost half of their bulk. We can then open them. European gypsies would come from Rajasthan. Thousands of Indians, composed of castes of artisans and mysterious musicians, were deported in the Middle Ages by the Persian, then the Ottoman army. Nomadic Indian tribes might also have migrated voluntarily into the country now known as Turkey, then Romania. After being enlisted in the Egyptian army, they came back to Europe, introducing themselves as Egyptians, where the word gypsy takes its origins. The family then sells its production to a wholesaler, who will sell the charcoal on the market. Mira, Biram's sister, is getting ready for the biggest Kalberia festival of the year. Four days of celebrations, with concerts and dancing, gathering about 2,000 gypsies. First time you see a foreigner? Really? Ask this boy if you've seen tourists before. <laughs> Festivals are the occasion to unveil your style. Kalbelia are very careful about the uniqueness of their clothing. They design it themselves and have it made by local tailors. They have developed a unique fashion which is perpetually evolving. Every evening, families join each other for a concert.
During the night, youths engage in dance battles. Once again, the audience gives bills to their favorite dancer. In the morning's cold, every family lights a fire. Chai is offered to me. Utensils are washed with ashes. In June, the temperature can reach 50 degrees Celsius, or 120 degrees Fahrenheit. The central tent is air-conditioned with humid cloths. The day proceeds in the tempo of dancing shows. Young girls invite me to join a makeup session. has come for me to leave the Calbelias. People for whom art is a lifestyle. Their knowledge of the desert, their peculiar style, their history, and their worldwide influence towards music makes them a unique people. India, might lose part of its culture on the way to development. But I believe in the Kabbalia's future.
they will adapt and improvise as they always have.